All right, so this is a uh, tutorial on how to edit the save files of choice of games and hosted games. <laughs> games. Uh, <laughs> so with this, I'm uh, I'm gonna test it using Samurai of Hayuga Four because the fifth one comes out tomorrow, and uh, you know, it seemed like I mean I'm probably gonna end up playing this game before doing that anyway, so. Might as well, right? So here we go. So, you know, first, this, by the way, this only works on Steam, I should note. Uh, this is the one that I've had the most success with. So, you know, once you buy the game and install it, this is on my second hard drive. It takes like two seconds with these games, luckily. So you inst install, yada yada. Okay, so important to note here is that for... Uh, in order to find the file that you need to use, you have to open the game eventually, once it gets there. <laughs> open the game and uh, let's see. Open the game and, and move forward at least once. Just so that it, it kind of like initializes and kicks everything into gear. So it generates that file, basically, is what you want. Then you can just close out of it. So once you do that, uh, oops, then you want to create a desktop sh shortcut like this. And you right click on it, you go to properties. This number right here, this is what you're going to want to keep track of. So write that down or find some way to, you know, keep track of that or if you memorize it. Let's see, 1132100. So once you have that number, you want to go to your PC thing, go into wherever your uh, thing, wherever Steam is installed, go into Program Files 86, and then you want to scroll down to Steam. And you want to go to user data down here. I have all this stuff pinned up here because I use it all the time. But, you know, first time user data. Mine, you know, yours might look different, but mine is this number right here. So now you just want to find that number. What was it, like 113 something? 113200, there it is. So then you go into the remote folder. And now you're looking for the one that, that says PS state. You know, we're looking for the one that ends in PS state. There's all this other stuff that is vital to the game working properly, but this is the one that you want. So you're going to open this. I use Notepad++, but I know some people use other stuff. And here is the file. Now this thing, this thing changes as you play the game. Like, not only when stats change, but just as you advance and go into the next page, this thing actively changes. So you're going to have to keep track of this. But um, once you go in here, you can see Impulsive, Perverted, Charming, Drifter. You can edit all these stats to whatever you want. And, you know, edit other stuff. And if you know how to use Notepad++, it's, you know, kind of a lot more simple from there. But if you don't, you know, if you're looking for something specific, you can find something you're looking for, like let's say um, you know, you're looking for characters or something or um, you're looking for I don't know, some other variable that you want to mess with you can just search and find it that way but the stats is really what I mostly use this for but anyway, so once you have this, you edit this, you save it, and then once you load the game back up, by the way, I should probably also note, uh, if you have the game open while you're doing this, and you hit save, you're going to have to close the game and then open it again for this to generate properly. So once you open the game, it will make those changes, and you can go into the stat screen and see everything properly. Uh, let's see, in fact... Let me just do a test run so you actually see what's going on here. So let's do pre-made character. Uh, sure. Sure. 
sure, whatever. No, chivalrous, what? I'm just gonna hit random stuff. Da -da 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 -da. Oh my god, I might have to skip through this. There we go, okay. So, here we are. Da -da -da -da. Moving on. So, now, if you look at my stats, these are my stats, right? So let's see. Um, let's do... Let me change my impulsive stat. So if I turn to the game and I exit out of here, yep, and I hit that, and you'll see how this will all update. So now, there's impulsive is 90. So the way, the way this works with... Actually, let me open this back up so you can see. The way this works with... Uh, the stats that are on sliders like this is that it doesn't like there's not a stat for each one. There is kind of like a dominant stat that the whole the whole uh, variable kind of is listed as. So you don't see impulsive and calculated. You just see impulsive. So it's kind of like um, you know if you want calculated to be at ninety, you would have to make impulsive ten like. You know, like that kind of thing. And then if if I close out and open this again. Oh. There we go. You can see it's a 10 now. So that's kind of how those ones work. You know, just find the one you want, and then you have to go kind of by whatever the author has made the dominant stat. You have to just edit it based on that one as opposed to what the one you actually want. Uh, attunement, right? <laughs> so the way <laughs> uh, the way attunement works in this game, in this entire series, it's complicated. It's not. I mean, like these ones. Let's see. Of observation and deduction. I believe I can edit those ones. Uh, observation base. Okay. Yeah. So. <laughs> Okay, so here here is the number. So let's make that like 90. And screw it, let's make deduction 92. But you see these other base max things? These are modifiers. And that is a thing that is... I mean, it might not be unique to this game, but it's something that I don't see in a lot of games. So, <laughs> basically what that means is that uh, this number is not necessarily going to be reflected here because there are other things that affect it too. And with the attunement, it's that it's that way too. Basically, uh, the author made it so that these variables have separate variables that affect them too, which makes it really hard to edit them, which is kind of annoying. But with other games, it's usually a lot more simple. <clears throat> so if I was to exit out of this, We'll see. We'll see. This, I forgot how how complicated this specific series is, but okay, yeah, there we go. So those ones are like that. But as you you know, as you go on to play the game with with this series in particular, you might notice that what shows in your stat screen for these ones is not necessarily what shows in the code, and that's because of these modifiers. And I I have fiddled with them for so long, and I don't know how they work. But, you know, be warned. So, that being said, that's basically how to do all of that. Now, there's one more step that I usually take. Uh, you don't have to take, but it's something that I usually do. I have a, um, a choice of games save folder. And what I usually do is I copy whatever I have. I make a new file. Right here, let me add it. So in my choice of games folder that you can put wherever you want. Let's do Samurai. Oh, Samurai. Oh my god, my spelling is awful. That's it, right? No. Do I not know how to spell Samurai? Yeah, no, that's right. Oh my god. Da -da -da. Hayuga. I am an idiot. Okay, there we go. Samurai of Hayuga saves. Okay, and then once you have that, 
So you save it, and you want to make it an all types file. And you uh, will see why in a minute here. But because basically these files, in order to work properly, they can't be text files. So let's call this uh, SOH. What is this book? Four one. And then I will put it in my Samurai Fayuga saves folder. There it is. Da da da. So as you're playing, you know, Notepad plus plus will kind of keep this stuff open, so you don't really have to worry about that. But if I made a choice that I didn't want to, like let's say chop down the apple. And then if I read through this and was like, oh no, that's not what I wanted, you know, I can go back here and just click no or yes, it doesn't really matter, but copy this, paste it in the first one, in this the save state one, paste, and then once I open the game up again you'll see I am back to the previous choice. So it's essentially an impromptu save system that I use all the time. All the time. Because a lot of these games don't have saves, you know? They don't have saves. So this is pretty much the only way to do it that I've found, unless the author implements a save system, but that's really up to them. So let's see. I think that's everything, right? Da -da -da. Yeah. That's everything. Um... Uh, you know, like there, there might be um, some. I did a post on the the choice of games forum too, actually, that outlined this thing in le like a less visual manner, but in more detail because of you know not everyone's system is the same, and sometimes things look different. But this is just kind of a basic, you know, building block of how to go about it. So you know. Take it from there. Alright, well, good luck, peeps. Happy modding.